God, good morning and welcome to Phuket Christian Centre. And if you're watching from somewhere around the world, people from six continents watching in today, we want to wish you a very happy Valentine's Day. We're continuing our uh, examination of living in the new normal and my message today is called awareness. You see the screen, we've got a nice picture of two people being socially distanced. You see, I'm so glad that God was aware of our needs. And He did something about it. And His motivation for being, uh, when He was aware of our condition, uh, his motivation was love. The word of God tells me that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God didn't wait for us to make the first move, but He made the first move. So this is a very important topic, awareness. Be aware of the people around you. Now as we learn to live in the new normal, the awareness of people around us is probably motivated by the fact that we could catch something from them. And COVID has made us think in a different way. It's making us behave in a different way. Before COVID, I never wore a mask. Right? But now, here's my mask in my pocket and I'm taking it off to preach. Right. And we, we need to understand that when we're making this lifestyle adjustment, we need to be aware of the way in which God wants us to live. God wants us to live a lifestyle that brings transformation not only to us but to our families and to our community. And that's what Jesus taught us. He taught us to be an influence to the people around us. But when we go through difficult times like we're going through now, and although we, we, are, we praise God that we're, we're fairly COVID free in Phuket, every now and again there's an outbreak somewhere but it's, it's soon dealt with. But the result has been this separation from the rest of Thailand, separation from the rest of the world, and uh, we're living in very severe economic times. Uh, yesterday we had to go to Central and we were walking through Central and we saw two amazing things. They were selling Mercedes Benz cars. And people weren't even looking at them. Because who can afford to buy a new car? Right. And there was also a festival on celebrating hotels, but we've got no tourists. Okay. Have you just seen crazy for me? Why have a festival for hotels in Phuket? Because the people in Phuket are not going to go to hotels in Phuket. 
ันไม่มีคนที่จะไปท่องสักเท่าไหร่อันนี้เขาเขาไม่ได้ไปแล้วก็ถึงจะมาจากต่างประเทศก็มาไม่ได้ในตอนนี้ I was looking at the BBC News the other day, and it talked about going on holiday. Let's, for example, look at Thailand. First of all, it costs three times as much to come on holiday here than it normally does. They were talking like 100, 200,000 baht to come on holiday. And the king is going to pay that. And said, when you come, the first five days you have to stay in the hotel room. And by the way, you pay all that money. You cannot choose which hotel you go to. The government chooses which hotel you go to. And you pay the first five days in the hotel room. You can't come out. Food is brought to the door. After five days, you're allowed to go into the pool. And then you have to wait two weeks before you let loose in the city. But most people from the UK, and this is obviously based UK based. Most people in the UK only have two weeks holiday. And then when you get back to the UK, you have to go into quarantine. <laughs> so last week they actually made holidays illegal in the UK. So people are still trying to do what they did before. And it's impossible. You can't do it. And we should be we should use every opportunity to adjust our lives to follow the pattern that Jesus laid out for us to live. Because unfortunately, a lot of Christians don't live as the Bible teaches us to live. So now is the time for us to use our present circumstances to adopt the mindset of Christ. We heard this morning testimony from Pastor Glenn how he's been using the opportunity online on Zoom to have Zoom calls with what three nations, people in three nations, his family getting together and being the ecclesia online. And he's seen his family transformed, and he's not even with them. He's the only member of his family he didn't forget. But he's got people in Dubai, and people in Bangkok, and people in the Philippines, and all of them together are being blessed. And if this is the new normal, I would say, I still don't say, bring it on. Because we apply what the Word of God teaches us to our circumstances. Now remember, our lifestyle pattern should be based upon what we call prayer evangelism. That's 
what Jesus taught us to do in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 24. And we're going to look at the crucial points of this teaching. Right? So what can we learn from, from Luke 10? First of all, we need to learn to work in partnership with at least one other person. Jesus had 70 disciples at his disposal, but he sent them off in 35 pairs. You see, when you work with someone else, you have the power of agreement. In Matthew uh, uh, 18, we, uh, Matthew 16, we read where two are gathered together, two or three are gathered together. The minimum requirement is two. Right? Where two are gathered together, whatever you ask in my name, my Father in heaven will give it. Right? When you work together with someone else in agreement, there is power release from heaven. And we need to learn to work in partnership with others. Because when you work together, you work in the power of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, we need to learn to start by speaking peace over, us, over, over our families, over our friends, over our uh, uh, neighborhood. You see, when you speak peace, you push back the forces of darkness. You establish kingdom rule over that area. Right? I come and I speak peace to you. Remember when Jesus was in the boat and he was asleep and the disciples woke, woke him up, they were scared because the storm was so bad. What did Jesus do? Did he issue who, uh, quick, everybody, get the oars, row, row, row. No, Jesus spoke to the storm. And he said, simply said, peace. And then it stopped. Right? So we need to address the spiritual climate of uh, a situation before we do anything else. Last night we were at an a, a, a international worship fellowship. I was sat next to some horrible little idol just coding satanic symbols and all kinds of stuff. There was all kinds of things out. The first thing I went in, I just started declaring peace. I had to do that before I could worship. Right? You try worshiping in a boat in a storm. No, first speak peace, change the spiritual climate. When you speak peace, you disarm the forces of darkness. You change the spiritual climate from hostile to favorable. You lay down the foundation, you quiet the noise so that people can hear the word. Right? 
You remove distraction. Thirdly, fellowship with people. Spend time with them. Get to know them. The, the word in, in uh, Luke 10 says, go into their house and let them cook you a meal. So next time you go to see Pastor Wan about dinner, move on. Right? So we need to 
sap children that God cares. When you find out their family, minister to them. So before Kundit went into hospital for her operation, her cancer operation, we were showing her God's love and we were saying, what do you need? I need prayer. And we prayed for her. And she's turned to Jesus. And I believe God's going to heal her. She, she needs that assurance from us. Right? So it's so important to get to know people so we can find out what are their felt needs and in the name of Jesus we can beat those needs. And of course, if it's a practical need, we need it. You don't have to go on a 40, you don't have to go on a 40 day fast if someone says I'm thirsty, give them a drink. You gotta go tap, you gotta cup, you put some water in, you give it well, you don't go tap, you gotta go a bottle, put some water in, and you give it to them. Right? It's simple. Don't overcomplicate it. If it's difficult, then you pray. Right? But if there's two of you, the word of God says, two or, her, two or three are agreed. Whatever you ask, it will be done. The next thing you need to do, when God answers their needs, you need to minister them about the kingdom of God. And just say, this didn't happen because I came to visit you. This happened because God did something for you. Not everyone will respond. But if you don't give them the opportunity, how can they respond? Share with them that the kingdom of God has come to you. And God wants you to live in relationship to Him from now You see, one of the things that happened with Kunit was she wanted to come to church last week, but she was too sick to go. I visibly saw a change in the face. I saw a face without God. By the end of the evening, I saw a face that was running to God. You see, when well, you have to give people the opportunity to respond. Not before you help them, after you help them. Right? Now, what happens if people still say no? Jesus gives 10 letters and only one came back and said that you. Right? Now, the truth of the matter is this. If we all did our job and 10% of Thailand got saved, that would be, what, uh, 6 million Christians? Mm -hmm. 
Are the six million? No, we only any, right? At the moment, the percentage is 0 0.1. Only the test So, we're not doing what Jesus did yet. Right? If you do all of this, if you bless people, you go to the, you, you meet the felt beings, you see God get miracles, if you do all of this and people still reject you, then the word of God says, everything that you bless them with will come back to you. Right? So if someone's in desperate need of transport and you need to pray for them, you get a car, pray for one that you like.
Now, Jesus, I tell you, the dominion of darkness is no kingdom of darkness. Right? Because the devil is not a king. Right? Only one king is Jesus. Hallelujah. And we serve him. And it's the icing on the cake. Right? Because at the, the, the end of the section in Luke 10, Jesus then says, Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And we have insight into the will of the Father. Right. We don't rejoice in the fact that we're beating up the devil. No, we rejoice in the fact that our names are written in heaven. Right? That when, when the demons show up, they say, Oh, I'm going to it. That's the plan, I know it. Right? When I when demons see me walking along the street, I want them to put their helmets on. Why? Because they know they're going to get trouble. I never see the demon's hair. He's always got a helmet. <laughs> Praise God, because they know what's coming. The good, freshy. So, we need to develop this lifestyle. And that helps us to be aware of the people around us. Listen, it's very important for you to know who you are in God. That's so important. That's really important. I need to know I'm a child of God. I need to know I'm forgiven. I need to know I'm empowered. I need to walk with the manifest presence of Jesus with me at all times. But if the manifest presence of Jesus is with me and I serve him, that means that I, if I am like him, I am also a servant of others. Jesus is God. He's the object of our worship. He's the person we've been singing about this morning. He's the one who saved us. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And yet, Jesus said this. In Matthew 20, verses 26 to 28, he said this. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man, i.e. Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He was prepared to suffer in order to serve his father and to serve us. 
คนทุกเพื่อปฏิบัติพระบิดาและปฏิบัติมณฑล Right, you might be convinced about serving Jesus. If so, then you need to also serve the people around you. Right, he is our example. Yes, so then that young fellow. It's certainly not easy, but his love of the Father, his love towards us, enabled him to overcome every obstacle. And that meant. He could complete his work on it. Am I for all some great? For that time, he was able to do it. My king, we don't need. Yeah, I, you know, that is is terrific, right? What was one of the last things that Jesus said on the cross? Ah, something that Jesus put. Yeah. It's one of the things said on the cross, right? It is finished. My king, we don't need. Am I for all some great? Okay, done it. Some great. Okay, but that would be great. To know when you gotta have to eat the things again. For the main reason, the main thing, when we get to the point where we know we have to do everything again. Wouldn't that be great to get to heaven? The first thing you say to God is, "Lord, I did it." Oh, the thing is, when we get to heaven, we ask God, "Lord, I did it." Why do you think God said to Moses, "Do it"? Why do you think God said to Moses, "Well done"? Why do you think God said to Moses, "Well done"? Why did Jesus say, "Well done"? Good and faithful, what? Servant. Why do you have the words that say, "Well done, good and faithful servant"? Why? Why do we want? Why do we long for God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want God to say that to us? Why? Why do we want Yes, it is. The last words of the Apostle Paul. Come on. I've run the race. I've finished the course. Right. That's 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 the last words of a winner. That he was, he was killed by the sword. Whereas the sword went in, he didn't say how. He said, "Do it." Finish. Praise God. We need to learn. To love what God loves. What does God love? Love. Yeah, come on, it's most famous verse of the Bible, right? Right. So, three sixteen. For God so loved what? He loved the world. I spent years of my uh, receiving Christian teaching that I shouldn't have anything to do with the world. No, separate yourself from the world. Separate yourself from the thing that God loves. Come on, get it right. Right? For God so loved what the world. And He sent His only Son. God gave His most precious possession to us because of the depth of His love for what He had made. How does that make you feel? Don't look at the world with the eyes of a judge. Don't condemn the world. Love the world. Right? And if it's wrong, go fix it. How many of you got a son or a daughter? And if the son and daughter goes wrong, you say, "Okay, that's it. You're not my son and daughter anymore. I'll take you back to the shop. We have a new one." You try and do everything you can to fix 
the problem. Praise God. It's the same with the world. Yeah, the world's corrupt, it needs to be restored. Right, and that's the work that we begin to do. To destroy the works of the evil one. When God gave his son because he loved you. How do you feel about that? Thankful? Does it make you feel special? When you think Jesus died for me, does that make you feel special? That God would love you so much that he would give his only son that so you could know him. I mean, what kind of motivation do you need to love him? When we come to a deep appreciation of what God has done for us, it should do something in here. It should do something in here. Romans 12 2 said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's important for us to grasp. Because it should change the way we live. We should become aware of God's desires for us. And then should make us aware of his heart for the world and we should receive that same heart. And in this church we talk a lot about living in the manifest presence of Jesus. Knowing Jesus and feeling His presence at all times, not just in worship and raising your hands and singing songs, but in everything you do, Jesus is present. Even if you've got a pain in your back and you're doing a Zoom call with your relatives in three nations, yet the power of God comes on that Zoom call. That's the testimony we heard this morning. The exact words were the presence of Jesus came upon us. You see, knowing Jesus and feeling his presence at all times helps us to serve God's purpose rather than our own. If you're going to be aware of the people around you in the world so that you can bless them and help them, you have to become Christ-centered instead of self-centered. Right? Now, at this time, we've been encouraged to be aware of others. Right? You've been encouraged to be aware of others. Right, social distancing. I've got to tell you that your ties are rubbish at it. Right, you can't do it. Right, I, I, I can't believe we haven't got COVID more prevalent here than, than it is because the social distancing, especially in a queue in a supermarket, Right? 
they just can't do it. Right, there's even lines on the floor for you to look at. Why don't we have money? I saw I saw a little kid peeling the peeling the sticky tag off in in Tesco, right? Peeling the little sticky off the floor. And two of the Tesco staff were looking at him and they were going, oh lovely. to try and protect us, to keep us alive. And we can't do it. Right? I mean, the constant threat of the lethal virus cannot keep people apart. Shall I tell you who's the worst of all? Christians. Right? I'm, 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 I'm doing this when I see people coming. I'm doing this. Right? No. Does he stop it? No. I'm, I'm thinking, which part of lethal communicable disease don't you get? Right? And it's unbelievable. Right? So, the only thing, the only thing that can help you to live as Christ lived is for the power of the Holy Spirit to impart something to you. Because you're not scared of COVID. And they ain't going to stop you. Right? The only thing that's going to make you Christ centered is an impartation of the Holy Spirit. Right? It's to change what I'm talking about, it's a behavioral change. To live as Jesus wants us to live, not as how we want to live. Right? Now I'm talking about local things here in Thailand. In your nation, if you're listening to the the cultural problems will be different. Right? If I was in England, I'd be talking about this stuff. It's just as bad. Now there's a there's a, a charge, ten thousand pounds, which is what uh, 40,000 40, is it four hundred thousand baht? Fine for people meeting together in, in a party outside of you, your house of bubble. Right. They can't, put, can't put them in prison because that could put, put COVID in the prison. Right. So, so the only thing you can do is find you. And thousands of people still do it. What's it? I mean, and the death rate is just off the charts. Thousands a day. And people are just like, oh, let's have a party, we won't get anything. Okay? I'm in wish, but I'm not there, I'm here. So this is, this is Phuket story. About a few days ago, we were waiting to red light on our way down to Kingdom Cafe. Right, and we're one of the intersections where they have the countdown, right? 
So we've got the red light, we've got the red numbers, and it's, it's 10. It comes to 10. I'm not fast again, but I'll exit. 10 seconds left. That's it. Right? Folks on the motorbikes are red side to rebel. <laughs> 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 Right? You think, what is this? Is it the start of a Grand Prix? Right? You think, is this the race? We're going to start now. Because everybody... Right? 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 the red light's going to change to green in a minute. And you know what's going to happen. It's going to be pandemonium. The manifest presence of Jesus. How will you be able? Hello? Hello? Right? That, I, I want to tell you all now, there's a lot of guilty laughs going on, right? Right, because you're Right? You're ready to go. And Glenn's doing that, he drives a car. Faster than 100. Maybe the speed gun won't pick it up. 
ป็นสิ่งที่เราสามารถทำได้เพื่อแสดงว่าเรากำลังรับรู้กับสภาพที่เกิดขึ้น o u t h e p e o p l e around us not to be pedantic and say w e are going to obey the law or we are holy คือเขาเรียกว่าเขาอกเข้าใจคนที่อยู่ในร้อนเราไม่ใช่คิดถึงตัวเองไปหลัก How many people feel proud that our island is number two for road traffic deaths in the world? ในบ้านที่มีความภาคภูมิใจว่าภูเก็ตของเรานั้นเป็นที่ที่มีคนตายเป็นอันดับสองของโลก I'm not proud. I love Phuket. เกี่ยวกับอุบัติเหตุเราไม่ภูมิใจใช่ไหมคะ I love Phuket. This is my home. นี่คือบ้านของเราฉันรักฉันอยากให้ภูเก็ตเป็นแบบที่ดีขึ้นฉันอยากให้ภูเก็ตเป็นแบบที่ดีขึ้นฉันอยากให้ภูเก็ตIt starts with me. Being aware. That's just in everyday behavior, but I can be better in other ways spiritually. I don't want to be self-centered. I want to be Christ-centered. I want to see that Jesus Christ. Look at the look at the backlash that Jesus got from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. See, see, see. 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 Yeah, he started throwing the tables over. Now I'm not suggesting that you go down the market and start throwing the tables. Right, but I'm suggesting that we show the people around us how to live a Christ-centered life. I can easily serve my own desires when I'm in different 
situations. But if I'm living in the manifest presence of Jesus all the time, if He is with me all the time, He gives me strength to do the right thing all the time. If I partner with Jesus, then I can develop a lifestyle of serving God and serving others. Okay, so here's the truth that we need to go away with this week. Right? Look at the social distancing picture, it's changed. You need to put Jesus between you and the people around you. Right? And awareness of the needs of others starts when I'm aware of the presence of Jesus. If you're at a traffic light on your bike, and it's red and there's 10 seconds left, how are you going to drive? Imagine Jesus sat on the back. How are you going to drive? You're sat in your car to red light. And Jesus is in the passenger seat. How are you going to drive? If you stood in a queue at uh, Tesco, Tops or 7 Eleven. And Jesus is next to you. How are you going to stand in that queue? If you're talking to your neighbor, Jesus is stood next to you. What are you going to say? And how are you going to say it? Let the Lord speak to you. Because living in the manifest presence of Jesus has consequences on our behavior. You cannot change a nation, you cannot change a city, you can't even change your family if you can't change yourself. เราจะไม่เปลี่ยนประเทศค่ะเราจะไม่เปลี่ยนครอบครัวเราได้เลยค่ะ